If you were in Fab Love Drive last year, you may have seen over 60 shopping carts. That's right. There were over 60 shopping carts in the Fab Love area, which is on Fab Love Drive and the Matlock area. There were 61 shopping carts found, and along those, there were some arrests that have been made. A lot of people don't realize there is a law and a city ordinance from a different city. Which there needs to be city ordinance in this city alone. In just a minute, I'm going to show you some shopping carts that I have posted on a Facebook group, which I'm going to show you. Hopefully, the administrators and owner club do, don't even just, don't even say, I'm not going to say, I'm just not going to say, well, if they, well, they see this episode, they know what I'm talking about. Let's take a look. Meantime, more than 60 shopping carts were found in a Flower Bluff neighborhood earlier today. Two people now in police custody. Yeah, it happened on Flower Bluff Drive and Matlock area. Corpus Christi police officers were conducting a cleanup. That's when they found 30 shopping carts at a residence. And throughout the neighborhood, they found another 31 shopping carts just laying around. And while working to remove those carts, officers saw a woman pushing a shopping cart. She was arrested and charged with theft. A man walking with her was also arrested for a warrant out of Nueces County. The shopping carts were all returned to their designated areas. That leads us to our common sense alert. Let me go back to that one picture here. Look at the pops up here. See that right there? That's Walmart. That's Walmart shopping carts. I don't listen. I don't care if you're homeless. You can't carry all the, all that stuff with you. It's too heavy. It doesn't matter. You steal a cart, you're in trouble. That's the whole picture here. And yours truly, I brought back almost every single shopping cart, every single cart I can find. I mean, that's why... Let me show you. Let me show you what I mean here because you guys are going to sit there and say, well, what do you mean you bring back the carts? I'm going to show you. Because really, this has just gone on, this has gone on way out of hand when it comes to bringing back carts. This is one Facebook group called Around the Bluff. It's a private group. I don't want nobody from the show. Administrators are watching. This is for purposes only. Because I do a damn well job in this community doing what I'm doing. Performing and bringing back carts. I mean, let me show you. Those are, those are the carts right there. Let me show you here. Okay. You see it right there? One, two, three, four, five. Those are five carts. And then there were two more right there. That makes it that makes it seven. Then there were loads more. You see all that right there? I brought all of those back. We keep scrolling down some more. You see that right there? I brought all those back. So when you zoom in all out, you realize I brought back all of these carts. And you may ask me, do they pay you? They used to pay you. I, I've heard rumors like, they used to pay you to do this. I've got comments like, oh, we, you, should, you should work there. Yes, but I conducted a two-year investigation into something like this for one reason only. To help Walmart save money. Because if you, because really, if you steal shopping carts out there, if you steal a cart, you're stealing money. You steal gum, you're stealing money. You steal a hat, you're stealing money. Every product that you steal, you're stealing money, and that gets you charged for theft. Ain't gonna be bashing all these comments here. I mean, I'm not gonna say this name. 
Walmart and other stores pay people to go collect them. All you need to do is call them up and know what, so where someone needs to go get them. That person needs a job, needs that job, and it will help that guy working too. Like, they're saying your time will be more appreciated if you volunteer to help people in your community. Jim and Church without a wall. There's a lot of other places in the bluff. Very nice, though. Think about it. Okay. This is, this is from five weeks ago. This guy says, I remember the day I returned a motorized court to Walmart. Someone went in the ditch in front of my house, so I just did the right thing and called Fog Love Walmart, told him the manager asked nicely if I could bring him back. And, and I, and I did. And you know what my thanks was having the cops call and give me a criminal trespass to say, I was in shock. It was an understatement that the cops questioned why I was getting criminal trespass. But they did what the manager one, you gotta love Walmart. We'll throw in the common sense look to this comment coming up next. And still ahead, more of that body cam footage of a student who got pepper sprayed. Because he didn't because he didn't do what the officer told him to do. That dad comes in and he intervenes. Stay with us. Common Sense Alert. This is going to one comment towards a Facebook group, which I'm not going to name names. I'm, I'm going to call this guy Kevin. I'm not going to use his last name. and um, If you watch this, you know who you are. The person made this comment, you know who you are. He said he returned a motorized cart and he got a criminal trespass. It's like, what the heck? I brought back over 20 shopping carts, and they didn't even arrest me for bringing them back. I did every sweep all around Fire Bluff Drive. I saw some couple carts in Waldron. But all around the Flower Bluff area, the Flower Bluff area to Flower Bluff Drive. And the streets that are connected to Flower Bluff Drive. But that prompted my attention. I started doing this back in 2021 to help people save money. Because that's what Walmart's attitude is. Walmart's attitude is just, it doesn't matter, we'll go, get, we'll go get more carts. Which is, you're, this is, this is money. This is money. A lot of people tell me to show how about the homeless. This is not, listen. Let me get this out there to y'all. This, to you, to you guys in the blog, this is not about helping out the homeless. This is not about the homeless people. This should be about homeless to begin with. This is about helping out Walmart and making sure they don't spend a lot of money on carts. Period. Period. The, one, the ones who made the comments, you know who you are. You know who you are. I'm not naming names, but you know who you are. I do. You know who you are. I'm not naming names again. You know who you are. I got a lot of people saying thank you for your help. And hey. And, and even then, someone got a picture of me doing this. And lo and behold, I care about Walmart. I care about this community. I love this community. It's about doing a kind act to help out the community. Again, yes. And one person said, Yep, it's a billion dollar industry that treats its employees like dirt and only cares about its bottom dollar and how they can squeeze every possible penny out of you by the time you leave the store. Coming in, monopolize and force it all its mom and pop competitions out of business. Yeah, let's help them save a few dollars on carts. You're better off driving around and handing out sandwiches to hungry people. Not helping out millionaires save 20 bucks a shopping cart. Help the poor people who are forced to push carts to their home because they can't afford a car in this heat. Who cares about Walmart? I do. I do. For this particular reason. You know who you are. Let me tell you. This is not, let's take this, this is not about the homeless. This is about helping out the community and making sure they save money. Think about it. 
getting the wheels on the, the walk wheels and the carts, those cost money. And I'm doing the right thing. And if the store managers have saying, you know what, we don't want you doing this no more, then that's their choice. I will gladly step aside. Which I'm not going to. There are every carts around. There's there's a lot of carts in SPID, there's a lot of carts on Wall, there's a lot of carts on this street, that street. I will circle around every street day and night, carrying pepper spray and a taser until the end of the earth. Until someone grows a spine and says, Hey, this guy is right. He knows what he's doing. You're damn right know what I'm doing in this community. It's all about helping out the community. And this person here says, like, get enough sandwiches. This is not, again, this is not about the homeless. I'm not even bashing the homeless. If they take cards, I mean, what are we going to do? Arrest the homeless people for just sleeping out on benches and, and just taking carts? We help them out. We, we throw them in shelters. And that prompted a lot of replies. People just say, well, a lot of people can just sit there and say, and say to me, well, you're better off making sandwiches for the homeless people. Look, again, we're not talking about the homeless. We're, we're talking about saving money. And here's another one from back in July. You see that right there? There's five. There's two. That's seven. Ten. And eleven. That's eleven carts. And a lot of people are positive about this. A lot of other people want to sit there and say that, I mean... Like, I'm going to ask to the community. And one, and there's one comment here. In Oklahoma, you get paid $25 for each car you return. You request a bring back fee. You know what? That's not a bad idea. I mean, you go to manage and they just laugh at your face. And like I said, I talked to one employee. I'm not naming names. He told me, the guy that, that I saw, he talked to me. I'm not going to name his name, but... He told me that he told me that Walmart threatened to fire him if he brought back a shopping cart from outside the store. One employee also told me that they can't leave the premises to go get the carts while they're on their shift. It's like okay. And people are saying, well, those carts are expensive, and the more that I lost, the more prices go up. And they're at two days, we'll just go buy another one. And look, and when I first started doing this, I got a suggestion from one person, which I'm not going to name names, and I should work there. Let's scroll down here. Let's scroll down when, when I first started this. I started doing this back in July. Which was almost two, which was two months ago. I started doing this two months ago. When I actually started this two years ago, it all started with Dollar General, and it all it all started with Dollar General and Walmart. And I'm not going to badger other stores who are taking their carts. If they want to use to take out the trash, then so be it. I'm not going to I'm not going to throw, throw them under the bus. So this is all it's at. And again, 22 comments here. And. The guy here, I'm not even his name, he suggested I work at Walmart. I t and I said, okay. And one of my old friends, I'm not naming his name, but he said, quote, too bad Walmart doesn't care about it more like HB did. Putting locks on wheels of the carts, Walmart's had to just go buy more carts. I mean, H-E-B, 
What HB is doing here, here in Flat Bluff is doing the same thing. If I took a picture of it, I would show you for this broadcast, but I didn't have time. On a future episode, we may report from Mount Sinai HB, and I can show you those card reels, those wheel card, those wheel lock cards. That way you guys get a better picture, and that way you guys can understand why we compare Walmart to HEB. Compare HB to Walmart, because those wheel locks have trackers on them, and they can go find them suckers and bring them back. Half the time, I bring them back from, it wasn't outside the store, but from the bus stop. Okay, let me, let me draw your map here. Enjoy your map from a, uh, from a viewer perspective, right? He's out of here. There is... Okay. Right here. Okay, this is HB right here. And then on this side here, there's the bus stop. Right behind the store. And there are carts. Right behind the store, and right behind on this loop right here, there's carts right there. And when I do those, I bring them back to that area. If I had pictures, I would show them to you, but I'm doing something that no one else does, not even the police. I mean, back in 2020, back in 2022, the police did a whole sweep of those 60 shopping carts, brought them back. And it, it didn't prompt to my attention to go back out there and do what people, what the police aren't doing because these sweeps need to happen. I mean, I brought back over 30 carts in this community and people damn well are proud of me for what I do. So... Y'all members of the community, and from my Facebook group, y'all know who you are. Let's keep it up. Let's make let's make let's make this community safe again. We're taking back the bluff from vagrants, and we take back the and we take back the carts. Let's 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 save Walmart some money. And if we have to get the homeless involved, so be it. When we come back, enough, continue, we're going to continue our look into a student who was pepper sprayed because he refused to listen to the officers. The dad comes in, and the kid still refuses to wash out his eyes because he got pepper sprayed. What happens next, was we're, we got, we'll get everybody on edge. Stay with us. Saturday, I showed you I showed you a portion of part of the uh, controversial arrest that happened that happened just one year ago where a student got pepper sprayed because he didn't do what he didn't do what the officer told him to do. In case you missed it, let's give you the rundown of what happened. This student was underage. He's told the coach he, he's coach like he plays some kickball. And the student says, I'm not feeling good. I'm gonna go sit in the bleachers. Okay, we're not gonna play kickball today, we're gonna play some basketball, basketball come out. He sits down and he's like, Okay, basketball. Okay. I thought you weren't feeling good. And then they get to an altercation. The coach claims that he said, oh, he said, I'm going to fucking kick your ass. Don't even get in front of me, you bitch, this and this. That is when the administrators and the coaches decided it was a great time to get the police involved. Now, in that body cam version you saw on Saturday, he, he, the student and the coach get into an altercation. Arguing back and forth. And because of all this, this was recorded on a body cam footage. And as you saw, he got pepper sprayed because he refused to listen. He was like, I'm gonna go get my stuff. What's on his backpack? And he's like, No, you're being arrested. And he refused and he still refuses to listen. The officers, they did the right thing and sprayed his eyes. Ah, my eyes, my eyes, I can't see. That's what happens when you have spray. Your eyes burn, you keep rubbing your eyes, go, it won't stop, it won't stop. It's exactly what happens. But there is more to this controversial video. But, he, but in this video, but in that comp, in this body cam bridge, you're still going to see he keeps on, he continues calling his father saying, when are you going to be here? The cops are going to be here, but the cops are here, so on to this and this. I have, I've got a lot of things to say. I'm going to say at the end of this, uh, at the end of this body cam. Take a look.
situation. Look at him, stop back up with me. And at that point, he's telling me I got five seconds to take my hands off of him. Now you're making me feel like you're about to assault me. So on and so forth. Still doesn't listen. 
So, per my policy, if people were still not listening, even after I've already tried soft and hard hand control, I, my next step is to go to some form of, you know, baton, taser, pepper spray. I don't want to taste the kid. I don't want, I'm not trying to hit him with a baton. So I use the most compliant force I can, which is the pepper spray, which usually helps kind of lighten that mood and then go, oh, shit, that hurts. All right, swipe this, I'm done. So I didn't want to put electricity to the kid's body. He's just a kid. I didn't want to have to use this damn thing. So I, I, that's why I use a pepper spray. And he's still, I'm like, trying to get him to take his backpack off. So I'm getting cuffed up. We can take him to go get him decontaminated. He's still not listening to me. Still resistant. Still trying to keep the backpack on. Still don't want to stand up. I'm like, dude, like at, what, at, at what point are you going to listen to me so we can get this over with? You know? And I understand he's calling you. I understand you're pissed. Because you're here. Everything is excited. And this is recorded before I even started talking, you know. So if you do want to capture the bot or get a hold of the body cam, you're more than welcome to. I'm sure the sheriff's office will be able to supply you with that or your lawyer, whoever. Um, and then go from there. Um, but and I was trying to be as nice as I could be from the get go with him, but he just he wouldn't let me. He just, he just wouldn't let me. Anybody witnesses? Yeah, so said. the coaches witnessed it. The teachers here, not this tall black gentleman. But the uh, Mr. Perry, Mr. Graham, the coaches, and of course a bunch of kids during the middle of the altercation started pulling their phones and stuff out. But, I mean, they're going to catch whatever they can on their phone. All the good stuff. But all the teachers and the Mr. Graham and Mr. Perry caught from the beginning to the end. So, you want to have one of them step out? Okay. Yes, sir. So it's my understanding that in the beginning of class, I guess, that there's some gym to do. Everybody said usually some sort of a structured game, and they have a free gym. So the bars had told the, the coach that, you know, he didn't feel good, he didn't want to participate. So it's my understanding that there's during when the game opened gym, the Thomas wanted to participate. The coach was like, I thought you said you were sick. Why, you know, it's, you don't get to do the fun stuff if you can't do the other stuff, too. I guess, I, you know, I did not witness it. I felt that, you know, the coach came to him. You know, you know, the coach says he did. He was just questioning. And, you know, he does have the right to, you know, ask, like, hey, why aren't you participating in the lessons? Um, and the Thomas did call him a racist and did use profanity towards him. And that's what he called, you know, to the front office. Um, Coach Graham and uh, Officer McCray were the first people that came up, and then I came in after that. Uh, you know, trying to talk to them, trying to, you know, uh, you know uh, the cars really wanted to listen to the coach. Uh, the coach is really listening to the coach. You know, they were back. So we asked Horace to come out of the gym. You know, he refused. Hey, I'm, I'm at school.
I feel like we felt that out of there before so that happened, but we can get it was, you know, some of this and before we move out, we'll see your child. I don't think that happened, right? I do too. I don't think we can go this way. I want to be talking to him like, look, man, if you're having an issue, and I, I've told all the students this that I've interacted with, if you're having an issue with a teacher and you're getting pissed off, and you, if you walk out, come find me. Let's talk. I'll help you calm down, and, you know, you know we can talk with the teacher and see if we can come with some kind of conflict resolution. All the kids know it. I, I've gotten on a Zoom call with all the kids in the entire school and told them that on a Zoom call. So, I mean, they, they all know that if you're having an issue with something, just come and talk to me, and I'm sure we can figure out a way to, to solve the issue, even if it's with you and a teacher. So, so Tyler's Travis, were you here when the, when the whole process started? Yes. And how did that happen? So, I asked him to come out of the gym. He refused me. You know, Officer McRae asked him to come with him. Um, or to, to come out with us, you know, he refused, um, you know, I was afraid said, I'm going to give you a lawful order, you know, I told him, you know, this, this is what I'm doing, you know, Taurus, I'm not going with you, like, you know, I'm just going to sit here, uh, you know, so McGray, and we tried to, like, kind of, you know, pick him up, and he resisted, and you know, fell over, and, you know, just, you know, you know, told him, like, put your handcuffs, you know, it's, at this point, you are you know, resisting, I'm not sure of the law. Uh, you know, he was taking the backpack off, you know, he kept saying, I'll take it off, just give me a second, and I'll take off to McRae, uh, tipped it to you, and, you know, still, like, as soon as he was off, and he's like, well, I'm going to film this, I told him, that's, that's okay, we have cameras in here, too, it's all we're already filming everything within the school, um, so the last incident that happened, did you have to show them the court or anything, what was the last incident, uh, some incident when we did, I think I was talking about the last year, yeah, I don't know, I, I wasn't there, so I was there, so I was there, When we return, the dad comes in, talks to the kid, easy to get contaminated or not listen. Stay with us. Finishing up our body cam break with this body cam footage which was taken last year. If it involves a student who says he didn't want to do anything he's been told to do, it all started with a coach, with a student accusing a coach of racism. Then it ended with him being pepper sprayed, not following directions, and him calling his dad and filming the incident. Let's see what happens next when the dad comes in and talks to his son. I'm sitting right here. Dad, you want to talk to him first? Let's see what you can do. If you don't mind, can I just have dad talk to him first real quick? Thank you. You get his eyes wiped off with a pair of dad. He's still refusing to stand up. Yeah. Right here. 
okay now. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm about the 425 this year. Get your fucking hand off me. 
And I was like, all right, so you're, at that point, my mind was made up. He was going with me because so you've already caused a disorder, and now you're screwing up on me saying I got five seconds to get my hand off you, and all I'm trying to do is prevent you from going to jail. And then I'm falling off the bleachers. I go to put him in cuffs after I told him to stand up several times. And the lawful orders said that over the body cam, giving the lawful order to stand up. Didn't want to listen. I grab him. He's standing up, and the fight starts. And I'm grabbing him, trying to throw him down. End up grabbing his dreads, jerking him down to the bleachers. And then the rest of what I told you was, you know, backpack, not want to take it off. Given three different chances to take it off, still wouldn't take it off. So instead of going hands on with him again, I spray him, which is the next step in the use of force. So, and then he just sat down and wouldn't listen. And when dad finally got here, because dad was pissed off, screaming over the phone, I explained to dad when he got here what was going on. Dad calmed down and then helped me get his kid calmed down enough to go ahead and get him decontaminated. So, no, no, the gym's fine. It was just a one quick burst. Just psh, it wasn't like a full can or nothing. Coming up, he gets arrested and then he gets in the car. Stay with us. All sides of the story happening. Let's get let's go. What happens when he gets arrested? We're gonna skip to the very end. We're gonna skip to where he's he get he's gonna get arrested here because we are like ten minutes away from being done. Everybody else 
I'm going to lay on on to you, that way you don't fall. Because you can't catch yourself with your hands on your back. We're going to skip to when he gets to the car. Coming up, a brief review of, of this clip. Stay with us. To recap the bro the to recap the to recap the body cam footage, the team was underage. He's arrested he was arrested back in 2022 for disorderly conduct. That that clip that that body cam footage shows what he did. He was yelling and screaming, causing disruption, and it led to him assaulting an officer. We can all use a little common sense, and what it tells us is, hey, when an officer tells us to do something, we do it. We don't sit there and back talk and say, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go do whatever I want. Listen, if the, if the police, if we have a conversation with the police, and they tell us to do something, we do it. We don't sit there and say, I'm going to go do whatever I want to do. That's not an excuse. You may say you said a story with the police in jail. They're trying to help you so that that way they don't go to any more escalations. So again, this person is being charged with drug conduct. If he was an adult, he'd be, he would be sentenced to a lot of years in jail with probation. And during his probation time, he has to sit, he has to apologize to the school, saying that he was sorry for what he did. Now, if I was in his shoes, I would have listened, taken out the. I would have. If I was in his shoes, I would have listened and done what was told to me. Go back up to the bleachers. I would have listened. Instead of just sitting there saying, calling him one. Call someone a racist, saying I'm gonna go. You got five seconds to hand on me, effing bitch, this and this. If that happened, if I was in this kid's shoes, I something had to be done. It was a great thing. There were some cops on the, some cops were on the way, and and um, they handled it very well. I don't know about the officer, but. He probably got promoted or probably left. I don't know, probably one of the two. Alright, it's time for a viral break. This this happened, uh, this is a this is a as long as struggles like getting people arrest students get arrested. Two years ago, this happened two years ago. A person gets arrested, and what do all people do? Get out their fucking phones and start videotaping. And and view discretion is advice for this one. Take a look. views and it happened because she resisted arrest. She's probably charged two years ago with resisting arrest and if she was found guilty she would have she would have been sentenced to years in jail with possibility of parole. Depending on depending on her age. Depending on her age. Now coming up, coming up in our next viral break 
This Ohio schooler was caught with with a gun. It's something we've never talked. It's something we never focus in on when students bring guns to school. We focus on kids bring guns to school and they get in trouble. Here's a sneak peek. Even with a gun, is not a bad person. I understand. Just because I have a gun doesn't mean I'm a criminal. I understand. I understand. Y'all understand. You said that multiple times. I know. We understand. Okay? All right? School shooter. Bring that. An Ohio teenager claims school shooters ruined the privilege of bringing weapons to school after he's arrested for bringing bullets and a rifle to his high school. When he's taken into custody... The whole body cam footage show. This this was an 18 year old. The name is Nolan Wilson, and come up on Wednesday, you will see that viral video, and you can judge for yourself. You can and you can see for yourself what happened. That's game break for this Monday going to Tuesday. We'll see you again for game break Wednesday. For all of us here at YouTube, have a good night.